The human brain is the source of our thoughts, emotions, perceptions, actions, memories. The challenge is to map the circuits of the brain, measure the fluctuating patterns of activity within those circuits, and understand how their interplay creates our unique cognitive and behavioral capabilities. We have the opportunity here to study the most complicated machine in the universe, uh, the human brain. So we have some really exciting projects that are looking at things that are unique to humans. The NIH Brain Initiative has a program on research opportunities in the human brain. What is it about? I became interested in neurosurgery more than 30 years ago. And in uh, my training, which was in Montreal, um, there was a real strong mission and vision that any time you did neurosurgery on someone, it was a real opportunity to learn something about the brain and how the brain worked. Well, it's such an exciting time because all of these engineers and computer scientists are developing new ways to help us record brain activity. So if your brain has 80 billion neurons, we haven't had a way to measure the individual neurons' activities, which is really the computer power that the brain uses. So when we talk about how neurons code for information, um, we're talking about the pattern and the rate at which they fire discharges. We try to detect these different patterns and uh, decode this information in terms of how uh, it represents behaviors like speech. When a patient is being monitored for epilepsy or being treated for Parkinson's disease with deep brain stimulation, they would have recording or stimulating technologies implanted. This direct access to the human brain provides an opportunity to study how the brain works. What are we hoping to understand with these projects? Well, there is memory. I mean, loss of memory is, is one of the most uh, dreaded affliction of the human condition. And we have a, a unique uh, opportunity at UCLA with uh, patients who are treated for uh, severe intractable epilepsy. Uh, these, uh, some of these patients need the implantation of electrodes in the brain in order to pinpoint the origin of seizures, which also gives us the opportunity to, to look at basic uh, mechanisms of uh, memory. And we are working with electrodes who are implanted in the medial temporal lobe, and we modified those electrodes uh, such that they contain tiny little microwires that allow us to record the activity of individual neurons uh, while the patients are performing memory games for us. So this allows us to observe uh, what happens to these neurons as a memory is formed and as a patient retrieves and uses a memory uh, to make a decision. And we're trying to understand the relationship between single neurons that will activate during particular places in a virtual or real environment. These are known as play cells. And how those relate to ongoing oscillations or a reflection of population activity of many, many neurons and how all of that underlies successful spatial navigation and episodic memory in humans. And there's language. Language is the most fundamental of uh, the abilities that make us human. And one of the things we've discovered is that there's a lot of differences in how much people use that visual information from the face. So some people hardly use it at all. So even if they're looking right at the person, what, what that person's facial movements or mouth movements are doing don't influence what they perceive. Whereas other people use that information a lot, even more so than they do the auditory speech information that they're hearing. We also have studies about how the brain controls fine movements of the hand and arm. So we're recording um, from the motor cortex right now of people who have spinal cord injury. And so we have them attempt to do a movement while they're controlling a robotic arm, for example, using a brain-computer interface. And so we can actually see that there is information in the brain about the specific movement kinematics, so where you want to move your hand in space. But we also see neural activity that's related to these contextual clues, and that's what we're trying to study as part of our Brain Initiative grant. For the Brain Initiative, what we are aiming towards is a more comprehensive and mechanistic understanding of what a brain circuit is. We have a lot of psychological studies. How the brain works as a network, how it works in coordination uh, between the different parts in order to accomplish those tasks. Depression, mood disorders, uh, psychosis, schizophrenia, memory disorders, Alzheimer's, these are um, not deficiencies of just one spot in the brain. You know, there's not just one spot in the brain that controls our mood and makes us depressed or not. These are network disorders. There's a lot of parts of the brain that are involved. 
So the better we understand these circuits, the better we'll be able to treat disorders arising from dysfunction in these circuits. This type of research requires that teams perform according to the highest ethical standards. We pay close attention to patient safety and informed consent for recruitment and the appropriate use of brain data for sharing and in practice. In addition, we have neuroethicists in our review process and in the project teams. Our challenge is literally to understand how the brain thinks. And we hope that these studies will provide the fundamental knowledge needed to address the burden of human brain disorders.